Hello, this is a quick overview of EI Compendix, a great resource for finding documents on engineering. First, let's go to it. Starting at the library homepage, I'll go to Electronic Resources. Then I can either click on the E or scroll down to the E's and click on Engineering Village. So you might ask, why are we clicking on Engineering Village when we're going to EI Compendix? Well, EI Compendix is, or Compendix is hosted on the Engineering Village platform. And since that is on the banner and is in fairly large letters compared to the database of which we only have the one and is in small letters, many people refer to it as Engineering Village. But it is actually Compendix. Okay, well, let's take a tour of Compendix. There are various ways to search Compendix. You can do quick, which is your basic default search. Here you can choose a field or um, a subject, an author, or just do a keyword search and get results. You'll notice that after I did my search, I got some suggested terms. So pipeline processing systems, pipeline corrosions, whatever. I might decide that I would prefer one of those terms over what I put down. So let's, let's narrow it down and say water pipelines. As you can see, it added a search term. You can also do this manually if you'd wish. And it added the term water pipelines, which is a control or a subject term. When I click on an expert search, you can actually see my previous search here. Here it says that I did a search on pipelines within all fields, and I did a search on water pipelines within controlled vocabulary. If you know all of these fields, you can simply type them in rather than go line by line like you did in the quick search. Also, in expert search, you are able to have more search fields, 38 as opposed to 23 in quick search. And you are able to do more advanced Boolean searching. The thesaurus search limits your search to controlled vocabulary terms, much like the uh, pipeline corrosion um, search that I did previously. This can help target your search. When using a thesaurus search, you need to first find your term. So in this case, I'll put in, maybe I'll try something else, um, pipeline corrosion. And you can see that there are eight matching terms for that. The, my original one, cathodic protection, corrosion, corrosion protection, internal corrosion, and so forth. So that again, it's suggesting other terms I might want to use for my search. If I click on my term, I can see that there is a broader term, general corrosion. There is a narrow term, internal corrosion, and then there's several related terms that are, are close to it but aren't the exact same thing. If I click on the box, I can put pipeline corrosion into my search. I might want to add in, say, steel pipes, and I can connect, connect them with an AND, and then I can actually do a search on pipeline corrosion in steel pipes. You can see pipeline corrosion, steel pipes. If you're interested in what a particular person has published, you can do an author search. By the way, this is not me. Um, it will show what that person has published. If you want to, if you have a, a, an account, you can create an alert for anything new that that person has published. 
and you can view the Scopus author profile, which gives you a little bit more information about what they've done. The affiliation search would give you an idea of what a university faculty are writing about. So if I put in Oregon, I spell Nology, you can see that there are 511 records in Compendix on people who are currently at Oregon Tech. And this will include things that from people who are now here but were published this when they were elsewhere. And finally, there's the engineering research profile. This is not particularly useful in finding information, but should you be interested in going to another university, um, for either graduate work or as a job offer. This can give you an overview of what they do for research. Their top authors, their resource focus, their funding sponsorship, publishing trends, the subject areas, and source titles. Source titles being the, the journals or, that they uh, publish in. A very handy tool is the search history. If I click on it, you can see the recent searches I've done. The uh, 511 searches for Orient Tech, my, my pipeline corrosion, my pipeline and water pipes, and so forth. You can view all the results here. If I want to redo a search, I just can click on one of these and it will redo the search. If I want to combine some searches, so maybe I want to see water pipelines and steel pipelines and pipeline corrosion, I can say I want two and three and do another search on that and come up with a whole new search. You can here, if you'd like, download or email any of these um, articles that you want to select. You can also go to search history and create an alert if you have an account or saving the search again if you have an account so that you don't have to continue doing them. The alert will let you know when new material comes in that fits this particular search. You can choose articles if you'd like and either email them or print them or download them. You can also do that under selected records where you only have those three. Under more, you can get a compendix overview, which is not much, but it tells you that they have over 190 subject areas and over 32 million art total documents as the at the time of this um, at the time that I was um, taping this. Folders, if you have an account, you can create separate folders for doing your searches and, sh and saving your articles in. You can tag if you like, um, and not to me very useful because it's easier if you just put them in, in uh, folders, that you have whatever you want. Interactive equations is not something we have. It requires um, an, a subscription to novel and we don't have a subscription to novel and then you can end the session and that way make it available for anyone else though it's unlimited so that's not a big deal either if you should want to create an account there are two ways you can do it you can put in an, an email address and any email address if you that you would like to use create a password, it will send an email to that 
account, ask you to confirm, and then it will um, send you back to finish your registration. Or you can sign in by your institution, in which case you need to put in Oregon Institute of Technology, put in your Oregon Tech email, continue. It will send an email to your Oregon Tech email asking you to confirm and again send you back to finish registration. Once you've registered, you can sign in at any time. Um, I believe if you sign in by your institution, that might be automatic. Um, but I haven't tested that yet. You can then do alerts. You can do you can save articles in your folders and uh, be able to retrieve them next time you're in. Well, that has been my overview of EI Compendix. I hope it's been useful. Have a good day.